in your face, all over the place. We're online 24 7. 24 7. You're listening to the hottest internet station, WALMR DB Radio. Thank you, listeners, for always staying tuned in each and every week to speak out your issues with me. Show you right, Nadine. And Sabrina. And of course, uh, this evening we do have one of our special guests with us, Mr. Teddy Aston. And, uh, you know, one of my uh, good friends asked me to see if I can have Mr. Aston on the line um, with us on our show, Speak Out Your Issues, uh, and to talk about his book. The name of his book is A Golden Past in a Platinum Future. That topic sounds so like, wow, you know, you want to really dig in and see what has happened. And um, we have our guest on with us right now, Mr. Aston. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on our show. Talk to us about your book and other things that you've done um, throughout your your career. And uh, with that, if you don't mind, just letting our audience know a little bit about yourself. And we'll get right into just asking you a couple of questions. I'll be happy to, Nadine. Good afternoon, Nadine, and good afternoon, Sabrina. Uh, thank you all for inviting me to speak out your issues. It's a pleasure to be here, and of course with my good friend, Mr. Levi. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Teddy Aston. I have a new book released out. The name of the book, as Nadine was saying, A Golden Past and a Platinum Future. And the reason, people always ask me, Teddy, uh, how did you come up with the name of your book? Well, um, I've had a great career uh, uh, over the years. Not only a great career, I had a great life. Uh, my book starts, it's, more of a, uh, it's, a, it's a, a memoir. And my book starts when I was six years old. I was the paper boy in Pat Meadow, Georgia. And I was the first black person to integrate the uh, white water fountain that was segregated in that little small town of Admiral, Georgia. So I was just a neighborhood paper board, delivered papers for about 80 homes in the area. So uh, fast forward from that, I am a native of Atlanta. I'm a Grady baby. And during my early teens, my mom moved us to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, basically, uh, I got a job uh, at a very young age in my young teen years uh, because my mom at that point was a single mom raising uh, a family on her own. And I felt very obligated uh, and motivated to get my mom out. So I got a job at a very early age so I could help my mother out uh, because I really hated to see the pain on her face while she was struggling financially. So I'm very proud of that, uh, to be able to uh, contribute to the household expenses at such a young age. Uh, from that part, uh, I'll fast forward. Uh, Nadine and Sabrina, you may have heard of a, a, a barbecue chain of restaurants called the Old Hickory House. It used to be a chain of barbecue restaurants all over the city. And I was a, I had a job working at Old Hickory House. And a friend of mine uh, worked there also. His name was Charles Gear. Uh, Charles Gear was very instrumental in uh, recording Gladys Knight's first single, Every Beat of My Heart. Also, uh, him and Gladys Knight lived in the same neighborhood. So eventually, Charles got a job working for Atlantic Records. And uh, uh, I asked him, hey, if you can get me a job working over there, man, I appreciate it. Uh, I love the barbecue here, but the only barbecue I want to see is on my plate. So uh, I really need to get out of here and, and, and have a change uh, so I can look forward to some type of career. So uh, John, Charles got me a job working in the Wheel Warehouse. Wheel stands for Warner Brothers, Electra, and Atlantic. Uh, those it's a corporation, and those three uh, record labels were distributed uh, all 
together to the Wheel Corporation. And fast forward there uh, during that time, uh, 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 black music was becoming very, very popular and lucrative. Uh, so around that time, uh, while I'm working in the warehouse, uh, people said, Teddy, well, how did you go from the mail room to the boardroom? Well, I really started in the warehouse, but eventually I was promoted to the mail room. And about a year after that, uh, Warner Brothers was starting to expand their black music staff and get into black music because all the record labels uh, that was distributing and, and making music uh, was making millions and billions of dollars. Uh, Warner Brothers been a, a rock and roll and country and western record label. Uh, they had artists like uh, 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 Fleetwood Mac, the Duke Brothers, Jimi Hendrix, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Conway Twitty, Loretta Lynn, and the Marshall Tucker Band. So when Warner Brothers looked around and saw all the money that record labels like uh, Chess Records, King Records, Motown Records, Epic Records, all of those music labels that was knee deep into black music, Warner Brothers said, hey, we got to get into black music too. And I was chosen uh, as as the regional promotion and marketing manager for the Carolina market when Warner Brothers started to expand. Wow, 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 wow. You know, I knew this name of Golden Pass. That is a Golden Pass. And just, you know, knowing that you was uh, born and raised here in Georgia, Palmetto is, is it uh, 85 South, I want to say? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, you know, we, we lived in the rural areas like Palmetto, Falvin, Union City. Yes. Sandville. All of those cities now are like the suburbs of Atlanta. Right. And then they were countries, little small country towns. Oh, of course. Palmetto is still like the little country <laughs> town. I <laughs> haven't yeah. grown very much. Right. Uh, I don't know what I had, would have done if my mom had not moved us out of Georgia. Well, you know, Teddy, I really appreciate you sharing that. Of course, I'm uh, from uh, Atlanta as well, born and raised, and uh, a greater baby as well. So, But I was uh, raised actually in Atlanta, over by where the old Atlanta Stadium used to be in Summer Hill. Yeah, right. And uh, so definitely just just hearing your story, a, a little bit of your story, lets me know, you, like you're saying, the drive and everything that you had in you based on, you know, how you came up and um, just, hey, what your mom instilled in you as well. And I love it because, you know, we look to continue to see that to happen these days. And Again, we appreciate you letting us know because those kind of stories can be in, inspiring to a lot of our listeners right now. Having that drive, go get it. Hey, uh, be willing to stand up and ask, you know, because and it showed you wanted to uh, go from uh, I, I know about the old Hickory House around town and um, knowing that like you say, you were just going to go only so far and you had the, the vision to go further and even just to step out and, and take the opportunity, even if you didn't, you know, um, have it at that particular time. That is awesome. Uh, Sabrina, did you like to chime in or have any questions, anything before we get started? Oh, what a rich history. Yes. I'm sitting up here in awe, like, Wow. Okay. Yes. Wow. Like, when did you start <laughs> working for, for, um, Warner Brothers? You know, working for Warner Brothers. Well, like, at what age? Okay, basically 18, 19 years old. Because I was uh, you still sound young. So I'm like, <laughs> what age did you start? <laughs> well, that's another story. That's <laughs> you know, I'm glad you asked that question because that's how this book started. But and uh, uh, but I started working in the warehouse. Uh, I, you know, doing everything that if a person.
person working in the warehouse doing everything that's suspected of me. Plus, I'm doing more. I'm working overtime, doing yeah. whatever I needed to do uh, to make more money, but at the same time, uh, be as dedicated to working in the warehouse as I would be working in the, a corporate office. I learned a good work ethic very, very young. I learned a good work ethic when I was six or seven years old, uh, throwing papers, uh, being a neighborhood paper boy, because I knew people wanted their paper every morning at a certain time, like I still do now. Yes, so, yes. Uh, yes, and uh, so basically, uh, about two years after working in the warehouse, uh, I, I became the, I was promoted to the mailroom supervisor. Uh, from the mailroom supervisor, uh, I moved in, I was in a great position when Warner Brothers started to expand their black music department. I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, and, 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 and even working in the White House was a very important job. Working in the mailroom was a very important job because being in the mailroom, I was responsible for making sure that all the radio stations across the country got the music appropriate for their format. Wow. Right. So whether it was country western, whether it was rock and roll, whether it was jazz, whether it was black music, R&B, old school, uh, T, rock and roll, whatever it was, I was responsible. I had to listen to that music. The catalog uh, uh, category a country and western station, top 40 station, rock and roll stations, and separate the music to make sure everybody got the appropriate music uh, for their radio station in order for them to compete. So, uh, kind of fast forward, one brother was a stand in the black music department, and uh, they looked around and hearing great things about me, and they uh, wanted me to be part of their growing staff. So, while uh, working for Warner Brothers, but let me just kind of give you a backstory about uh, uh, the mailroom. Uh, when I was promoted uh, to Warner Brothers, uh, my last responsibility in the mailroom was to make sure that the brand new Candace Skate album was shipped out to all the wow. And the first record that I had to work, guess what it was? Candy State and Young Hearts Run Free. Young Hearts yes. Run Free. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I had, uh, you know, Warner Brothers, most of the artists at Warner Brothers, uh, I never had a music career prior to signing with Warner Brothers. So we had to develop, groom, put them with the right producers, uh, choose the right music to make sure that it was good lead singers from the albums. Uh, so, Starting out with Chandler Staten, uh, right after going to work uh, at Warner Brothers, uh, Warner Brothers signed an artist by the name of Prince. Oh, uh, yes. I was, I was responsible for his first promotional tour. Uh, and it's in my book, uh, you'll see uh, the very first, yeah. uh, the very first publicly uh, released photo of Prince and me on his first promotional tour. Wow. Uh, I've had a great career. I worked with Bob Marley. Um, I mean, you're talking about working with a legend. Um, oh, yeah. On his last promotional tour, he had an album out called uh, Survival. In that album, he was expressing his uh, dissatisfaction of anger and apartheid in South Africa. So uh, we had a his last promotion of party in Washington, D.C. He invited me up to his suite after the uh, the press party. Told me how happy he was, uh, uh, how gracious he was about the turnout of his uh, new release uh, presentation. Uh, that included the uh, Congressional Black Caucus attending, all the politicians, senators, uh, Congress, uh, radio, TV, and press. Um, D.C., uh, Baltimore, Virginia, and as far away as uh, Philadelphia came uh, down to his party. And uh, he asked me, Bob Marley asked me, Teddy, you ever go to Jamaica? I said, of course I go to Jamaica. I take my family there almost every year. He said, next time you go to Jamaica, you let me know. I'm going to have my dad meet you at the resort, and I'm going to show you what Jamaica is all about. Along with that, I'm going to make sure that my guy 
take you to my childhood home where I grew up. We're going to close it down for you and your family so you can visit it. Uh, I'm working with Quincy Jones. Uh, hey. was his Quest label that was distributed by Warner Brothers. And Quincy's uh, musical staff included Saida Garrett, uh, uh, James Ingram, Patty Austin, Kevin Campbell, and so on. Uh, had a great uh, working relationship with Al Jarreau. Oh, wow. I mean, you know, I, I just want to, I don't mean to, to interrupt you, but oh. I just want to, I just want to go back mm-hmm. because what our, our young, our young generation don't understand, back then, everything was manual. Yes. So right. you did not, there was no margin or room for error. And if you made an error, it was almost akin to a, a catastrophe. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was catastrophic. Because, you know, you had you couldn't go back and just press the return, you know, the, the delete or the backspace and fix it. You had, these were carbon copies with, with the black spots on the back, on the mm-hmm. typewriter, yeah. you know, um, there was no correction tape. Yeah. You, you, had, you, 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 you had to work, and for you to do all of this without the tools that we have today, Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. No social media. None. 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 That's what I'm saying. And none of this. You had to do yeah. all of this, you know, um, Absolutely. feet to pound, pound on, on uh, boots on the ground. You had to go uh, to each station. You had to walk to each station. Oh, well, there were no cell phones, okay? No. Probably. <laughs> you know what we had to do? You know what we had to do? <laughs> Every Thursday was tracking day, meaning mm-hmm. that you had to call all of your radio stations and find out what rotation your music was in, like meet them ahead of rotation. And if they wasn't playing some of your records, you got to find out why. What you had to do to get it on, you know? Right, so, right. Uh, uh, we were just fortunate, you know, and, and, and like I said, every day was, every Thursday was tracking day, so we had to call all the stations. And if we was on the road, you know what we had to do? We had to stop at phone booths. Hey, yes. 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 You know, call the info station, jump back in the car, and keep on riding. Yes. You know? and, and, that's, and that's what, what I'm... Right. You know, that's how things were done back then. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Warner Brothers went on... Uh, uh, Warner Brothers... Went on to sign uh, Al B. Shore. Uh, Warner Brothers signed Shaka Khan when, as a solo artist when she left the group Rufus. Uh, we had Norman Whitfield. Uh, Warner Brothers brought Norman Whitfield over from uh, Motown. Norman was uh, pretty much responsible for the Motown sound. He brought over uh, Rolls Royce, uh, Edward mm. Star. And undisputed truth. Walk, what is it good for? Right. And uh, another hit there. Uh, so uh, those artists, those are the artists that Norman Whitfield brought over. Uh, we had a, a great singing duo with Ashford and Simpson. Ashford and Simpson was some of the most prolific songwriters of all time. But when they decided to go solo, uh, as a group, then man, they had mega hits on Warner Brothers. Uh, Sylvester, uh, I mean, I really love working with Sylvester. Uh, he was a very flamboyant artist, uh, and uh, very gracious too. I-, I remember working with him. Uh, great story, Sylvester, in my book, uh, in reference to uh, working with him and coming to Atlanta, which hit it off. Uh, after the promotional tour in it for the day, he said, Teddy, I'm going to go to some of the gay clubs here in Atlanta. And uh, I understand if you don't want to go, uh, you know, we can just look up in the morning. So I said, Sylvester, you kidding me? I represent you everywhere, no matter where we go. Right. Uh, I'm going to run a limo. Uh, so if we're going to be out all night, we don't have to worry about driving. He said, man, 
Uh, appreciate it. Same. So, long story short, about that night, we hit three gay clubs uh, uh, that uh, Sylvester wanted to go to. And we were treated like royalty, like kings. Never had that kind of reception. But no artist. Those people love the ground Sylvester walked on. <laughs> And what uh, what years was was that in? Eighties, nineties? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Probably eighties. Wow. Early eighties. And, yeah, and then uh, uh-huh. uh, Donna Summer comes over to Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. You know, she's the queen of disco, right? Yes, loved she's her. The bad girls and uh, uh, other hits that she had out, along with uh, she's the queen of disco. Sylvester is the king of disco. Wow. So when you work with the king of disco, the queen of disco, mm-hmm. you're working with a prince, those events can never be duplicated, ever. True. You know? So uh, we went on uh, to work with uh, Madonna. Mm. Uh, uh, Madonna music broke at black radio before it did pop radio. And uh, that's a great story now, a great promotion I did with... Uh, on the Madonna album, you gotta you gotta see this story in the book to believe it. Well, it's hilarious. If a you, great promotion I did. And if you don't mind, Tanny. If you don't mind, all of this is so great, and I really don't want to have to stop you, but we're gonna have to take a station break. And right, before going to the station break, just letting our audience know. We have Mr. Teddy Aston uh, here with us this evening on Speak Out Your Issues with me, Show You Right, Nadine and Sabrina. And he's bringing a lot of information that, hey, would not normally be out to the average person like ourselves. So we we'll definitely appreciate you uh, bringing it, bringing your history in, and definitely get a copy of his book. That's the topic tonight, A Golden Past and a Platinum Future. Um, just listening to you, uh, Mr. Aston, when you were talking about in the warehouse, you built skills. And look, and, and the first thing came to my mind, you had a golden finger, <laughs> a golden yeah. mind, a golden finger or something. But with that, everybody would be right back because I didn't want him to stop, but I had to. We'll be right back in you on WLMR DB Radio. Do you want top-notch entertainment or Broadway plays for your event or establishment? Then see you need to hook up with New Amkarsha Broadway Place Promoters, LLC. Give them a call today at 470-776-0863. Your, your, your clients will be running back to your establishment when they see your next event is produced by New Amkarsha Broadway Place Promoters, LLC. Again, everyone, thank you for staying tuned in. Uh, we'll speak out your issues with, with them and show you right, Nadine and Sabrina. And we have Mr. Teddy Ashton on. He was giving us his rich history of how and what he did uh, in his career. He has named a lot of artists that he's worked with, and we really appreciate that. We're here tonight uh, with him talking uh, about his book, A Golden Past and a Platinum Future. And and who other than he could come up with that name, A Golden Past with a Platinum Future. And if you was staying tuned in uh, before we took a station break, you would see why. And um, to continue, uh, Mr. Aston, you were sharing, I think, uh, great information off the air with us of your thoughts um, we've already de- dived into what inspired you to write the book. You've given us an overview on that. Um, and, um, of course you shared a lot about your journey in the music industry and any special reflections you'd like to, um, uh, tell our audience. But before that, if you don't mind, uh, sharing with them your thoughts on, like you saying, all of this overall is history. Yes. Um, I, you know, this book has a whole lot of history. And not only does it have a lot of history, uh, this book is designed to be uh, attractive to all generations. 
whether you're old school, new school, a younger generation, this book is history. A lot of the music that you heard your parents, or grandparents singing uh, along in, uh, in the car, listening to the radio, or at home playing their record players, these are some of the artists that your parents were listening to, and you later, in the younger generation, later became familiar with. Uh, but they have no idea of what it took or what it takes to get an artist to that level so people would buy their records or sing along uh, to those records when they hear them on the radio. So, uh, uh, you know, not only the old school artists, uh, but also do a tribute to the younger generation of artists, you know, like T.I., uh, Rick Ross, and Killer Mike. Look at that. Uh, those artists, I do a special tribute to them because not only are they successful rappers and entertainment and entertainers, they're great entrepreneurs as well. You know, so um, you know, so I I take a very wide uh, look at my life, the people that has blessed me, the people that I've been blessed to help and to build their careers. Uh, even more artists uh, that we sign include, uh, not only sign, but also have a chance to work with and develop their careers. Jennifer Holliday, Frankie Beverly, Atlanta Starr. Atlanta Starr never had a platinum uh, or a crossover record that they came to Warner Brothers. We gave them that. Frankie Beverly never had a crossover album or platinum album until he came to Warner Brothers. Uh, Luther Vandross started out at Warner Brothers before he was uh, signed a solo, uh, uh, as a solo artist on another record label. But we broke Luther, made him an international star with a group by the name of Change. Luther was the lead vocalist for that group singing The Glow of Love and other hits that came out of that. So, before Luca was signed as a solo artist with another label, we'd already developed his career. It was probably the easiest signing that that label had ever had. So, uh, also, uh, we signed Ice T. Uh, Ice T, uh, you know, brought that gangster rap persona to Warner Brothers. Right. But at the same time, they had that gangster rap persona, but Ice T is one of the most smartest intelligent people that you ever meet in your life. See. Uh, he's not only a, 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 a rapper, he's an actor, he's a uh, he's, he's a celebrity endorser of different products. An activist as well. And right. An activist as well, right. absolutely. So that's just how brilliant this young man is. And I'm just so happy that I was able to help develop his career. Right. Uh, Sly Stone. Uh, that's one of Levi Miller's favorite groups. Uh, <laughs> when Sly Stone decided to go solo, he signed with Warner Brothers Records. Yes. When, when Larry Graham decided to uh, leave the group, Sly and the Family Stone, he signed with Warner Brothers Records. Uh, and we gave him his first platinum album with one of the men. See. Uh, George Clinton. Brought the Funkadelic to Warner Brothers and Boots' Rubber Band. Had a chance to work with those great artists and develop their careers as well. Uh, you know, wow. so uh, I had a chance to work with my homegirl, Jasmine Gott, who lives here in Atlanta. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. She's one of the smartest, brightest, uh, cheerful uh, people you'll ever meet in life. Yes. Uh, I've got a great Jasmine Gosselin in my book as well. <laughs> Look, I wanted to mention, and I really appreciate you just saying all of this, and I definitely, you know, uh, have uh, Miss Sabrina to ask any questions or any comments. But uh, before that, just wanted to let everyone know that, of course, Mr. Aston has uh, got the... Um, Golden, well, the Silver Award uh, for volunteering from President Joe Biden. Uh, and of course, recognizing his 
over 350 hours of service um, to this nation. And I could I could tell that you loved doing what you was doing just by spitting off all of the names of the people who you worked with. It, it had to be just pure fun. I'm quite sure it still is. But I like to just uh, mention a little bit about the latter. And, and the last uh, statement is, on behalf of the American people, uh, I, which is uh, President Joe Biden, extend my heartfelt appreciation to you for your volunteer leadership. And I encourage you to continue to answer the call to serve. Uh, this country is counting on you. So um, just uh, with that, you know, it's, it's really great to, to have a ladder from the president of the United States, and you definitely serve tirelessly. Um, also, I just wanted to ask, um, you have, um, I want, let me see, I'm trying to find it, something that I know Miss Sabrina would love, uh, a, a publishing company? Yes. Yes. Well, yes, I Yes, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was, that's the other thing I was just going to bring up, bring out that everyone, I know you've been talking about, you know, definitely helping produce um, records, but if anyone would, hey, I guess would like to have something published, you know, if you can go into that a little bit, then, hey, Miss Sabrina, you could definitely have it after that. <laughs> after okay. that, I just wanted to bring well, it up. Maybe let me, uh, before we go into publishing, yes. let me let everybody know how they can get the book. Yes. Uh, I developed a website just for the book. Uh, the website address is toughact.net, T-O-U-G-H-A-C-T.net. It's very easy to remember. Just think of toughact to follow, uh, toughact.net. Yes. And uh, I created a uh, website just for the book. Uh, so people can go on the website and learn more about me, Teddy Aston, the author. Uh, you'll have a chance to look at the table of contents. The table of contents will kind of guide you through the book, the whole entire journey. I can tell you more about me, the author. Also, if you want to leave a comment, uh, you're able to do that as well, all on the website. So... That's where uh, I encourage people to go because on, on each page of the website, at the bottom of each page, there's a link that'll take you directly to Amazon to buy the book. Oh. And the reason I chose initially chose Amazon for distribution is because uh, that seems to be the American way now, the, the, the easiest way for people to get it. They don't have to worry about running around to the bookstores to get it because... Uh, uh, one thing about Amazon, they're never out of nothing. You can always get it. You can order it from the comfort of your home. Uh, now, in terms of publishing, uh, uh, uh Nadine and Sabrina, uh, this is, uh, uh, I started this company, uh, uh, to publish my book because, uh, you know, a lot of people write manuscripts and they shop them around to different uh, literary agents and publishing companies. And, 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 and those, those, those uh, uh, manuscripts, basically, uh, 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 they don't want to be solicited with their own, with people's manuscripts. Because you can imagine how many people may are, uh, are trying to publish a book at this time. How many books can they read? You know? So... Mm. I'm not sitting around waiting for someone to publish my book. I publish it myself through Kindle and Amazon. And, uh, and if I find a very lucrative deal uh, uh, for my book, then uh, I, I, I'm not uh, obligated to stay with Amazon. I can go wherever I want to go. But in the meantime, it's easier, it's easier to publish your own a book your own material than it is to sit around waiting on somebody to do it for you. Hey. You know, so uh, now, uh, and, and, and the good thing is, the good thing is that Kindle and Amazon have a very great relationship. 
relationship. They do great work together. I'm very happy with the with with the uh, outcome of the way they publish my book. Mm -hmm. All the pictures are supreme. All of my photos were digitally digitized, so they all look like they're new photos. Even if there's some of the photos you see in my book are 20 or 30 years old. Yes, so yes. So I wanted quality. When my book is printed, I want the pictures to look like they were just taken yesterday. And, you, and when you look at my book, there's no bad picture. Yes, now, you're there's, right. There's not one bad photo. You're so, so right. Uh, I kept those photos. I've been had those photos a lot of them for 30 or 40 years. Wow. I'm just the type of person that kind of keeps everything. You know, uh, I'm not a hoarder. But, That's uh, history, uh, like you but say. I hoarder stuff like that. You uh, I like keeping. Yes, yeah, so like uh, you say, that's you know, history. Also, here's what a, uh, Sabrina and maybe this is what a lot of people don't know. How Atlanta became the uh, entertainment capital of the world for music and film. A lot of people don't know why. All they know is Atlanta is the music mecca. All the movie companies that move here. And the biggest movie studio of all here is Tyler Perry. Yes. So, uh, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Jackson in 1992-93 started an entertainment uh, commission that consisted of music and movies. He chose a committee. I was on that committee. Look at that. Uh, all of those details are in the book. Uh, he, chose a, uh, he chose me. Uh, as one of his committee members because he knew I was a mover and shaper in the entertainment industry. Uh, plus, he knew that I had free access to Burbank, California every other week. Round trip. Uh, stay as long as I want to. And uh, so, in other words, I had access to visit all the movie studios. I had access to all the record labels. So, the word, my job was to let everybody know that Atlanta is open for business. See. For the entertainment industry. Atlanta is open for business. You know, right now we got free land. We got free warehouse space. Uh, the Olympics is coming up. Free sponsorship. Uh, uh, you tell us what we want, what you want. We'll do our best to accommodate them. Look at that. So I list... Also, in my book, all the movie companies that has moved here. I list in my book, as a result of that, all the music industry people that live here in Atlanta. You won't find this kind of method anywhere else in the world. So people wonder, wow, why did Atlanta come become such a method? Mm -hmm. That was a vision that we had 30, 40 years ago. True. It's what it is now, but it wasn't that then. I remember. You know? I remember. So, Mm -hmm. We started that music commission to let people know, look, uh, you can do business here in Atlanta for, for probably 75 percent cheaper than what you how you're doing. You work in California, in LA, in Minnesota, wow. uh, in, in New York, and wherever else you make your music and uh, uh, movies from. So, and it is what it is today with the method. And I was part of that history. And building that history and legacy here that we all enjoy here in Atlanta. Yes, indeed. Really appreciate that. Uh, Miss Sabrina, did, did you want to chime in? Yeah, so I've had, <laughs> I've had the pleasure of looking, you know, going through your book. And then the pictures alone tell a lot of yes. uh, story. Yes. But the, the story in itself and what it is.
literal just an opening of of the beginning of a mega music industry uh, in in a city that has now we're we're like the number one for a whole bunch of oh yes <laughs> what's the company yes yes um, but to have such rich 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 history it would be you know it, for me to hear you know your book get together these artists and let them read your part the part of the book that you wrote about them have them to read you know read that chapter but even so to have them give a little excerpt on you know what it was like back then and what it was like working with you and and and, and how you all brought all of this together what right. a great story that would be you know in a documentary so I am looking for this documentary. I'm going to speak it in existence because I can, okay? We're kind of leaning in that direction, too, because Good. all of the interviews that I do, like we're doing tonight, I request copies of them. Uh, uh, all the reviews, we record those. Mm-hmm. So what I want to do, uh, of what we've done, uh, with the website, uh, we created a video page over there. So whoever Netflix is, uh, whoever may be interested in doing a documentary, we kind of already laid the groundwork for it because we got three hours of video over there that Casual Cal Dupree uh, did of me about different topics, different stories in the book. So we kind of laid that groundwork there. If you go to the web page, uh, look under the video section, and uh, you'll you'll hear a lot more about some of these stories that will kind of lead it uh, in a documentary way. And that's such a great thing um, to know for us to do, and I appreciate you bringing that up, Sabrina. Uh, You envision definitely documentary. This uh, definitely need to be told. Uh, and of course, you know, with everybody writing, a, you know, a book and and people reading it. A lot of people getting back into physically reading the books. But you yeah. and I know you're going to have it out in all the ways, just like Sabrina mentioned, having it where uh, you already on Amazon. So and all, I'm not for certain about Audible, but. Have it where just uh, get them to market all kind of ways. I'm quite sure with you being the astute business person that you are, you already have that going on. I, it's so much. It's so rich. That, like uh, Miss Sabrina mentioned, and when I showed her the, the book, I said, Miss <laughs> Sabrina. I mean, and it's like, what, 200 and some odd pages well, it's over 300 pages. Uh, mm-hmm. I think around 275 mm-hmm. pages. Mm-hmm. But even before, if you get to page one, you got the Roman numeral numbers of the introduction of the book. Right. That's over 20 pages itself. Right. So even before we get to page one. Not only that, it's an easy read. It's a big book. The book weighs almost two pounds. Uh, it's in an eight and a half by 11 format. So it's a very easy read, and most people tell me when they pick it up to read. I, 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 a couple of people have told me that uh, uh, once they got their book, they couldn't put it down. <laughs> they read it from front, to front cover to back cover in, in the same night. What? It's because it's that rich history that they were reading, and, and like... Yes, and there's uh, a lot of pictures in here, yes. a lot of artists, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then listening to the stories of the artists. What what I found funny was... <laughs> well... <laughs> I think it was Manny, I think it was Manny Clark, <laughs> you know, who, who was here? He's like, who is Prince? Prince who? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, 
Yes. I've had the pleasure of going. Yes. So 
Yeah. Yeah. Spiritual yeah. books, spiritual yeah. assistant books, romance. No, I have yeah. a, right. a plethora. I have almost 700 books in my Audible. Wow. So when I go on long trips and I'm driving out of town, I just put a book in it before I know I'm at my destination. But wow. it's like me being on an adventure yeah. and I'm listening to the yeah. books that I'm writing. And, and, and you're living uh, so Right. I'm telling you. So this book reads like it needs to be on an Audible. And you know, oh, yes. Trip. And to no be able doubt. to have, you know, that in your ear. Right. Um, as you're listening and laughing, because there are some funny parts. It, 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 it really is. Um, so I, I, I'm going to speak that over you and into your life. I'm going to speak the expansion of a documentary. I'm going to speak the expansion of this being a movie. I'm going to speak the expansion wow. of this becoming, you know, being on an Audible book. I'm going to speak to this being... Uh, New York Times bestseller. I'm yeah. speaking all of this over you into your life because it is just that good. It's that kind right. of book. Yes, so even when you look so at it. Yes. Yes, when you look at it, it's so. Right. A lot of times, you know, when you write the book, you know, you write the book, you know, and then you know, you get to the end of it and to stop you but we really have come to our closing uh with it and i love it of course you know you're always welcome back here on wlmr db radio uh and i i mean i don't want you to stop but our hour is has come near and by the time we really get to stop it's going to be really close to that hour 
uh, you're welcome to come back. You can come on any of the shows that we have, podcasts that we have. We already talked about that, and we'll talk about it again. Uh, just want to tell you, I really appreciate your richness of what you put out, audience. You'll hear from him again on WLMR uh, Radio. Uh, just remember, uh, we will air on Sunday at 6 Eastern Standard Time. And, and uh, may, I'm sure. Give my, uh, if, I, if I may let everybody know, uh, what it remind everyone how they can get my book. Sure. They can go to Amazon directly or go to my website. I prefer people to go to my website. Toughback.net. T-O-U-G-H-A-C-T dot net. you learn more about me. you learn more about the author which is myself, and you'll learn more about the table of contents. And that's video that you need to learn more about the show. And and last but not least, uh, Nadine and Sabrina, I really do appreciate you guys inviting me to speak out your issues. Uh, hey. I very much appreciate it. And uh, I would like to just say, ladies, keep up the great work. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate well, that. So and Miss Sabrina, I know she always say something of what she was about oh, to say. Oh, absolutely. Always remember, when you know your value, no one can ever diminish your worth. And that is so true. One thing, Mr. Aston, I wanted to ask you to leave with the younger generation. What would be that? Purchase this book for yourself. Uh, you should purchase a copy of it for your parents. This uh, book is black history. Uh, if you okay. think about what you're going to get someone for Christmas or their birthday a special occasion, consider this book because this book here will last you and your family uh, for a long time, for generations. To come. You need to know our black music history. Please. Thank you. Thank join you. Join the Thank rest of the you. country and, and, and share the world with copies of my book. I really would appreciate it. Thank you so much. Again, it's been Mr. Teddy Aston really giving us a lot of rich history in the music business with uh, one of um, uh, record labor. With that, you all, I hope you enjoy listening to our podcast, Speak Out Your Issues. Have a great evening. Until next week. In your face, all over the place. We're online. 24-7. 24-7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. W-A-L-M-R-D-B Radio.